Hey there, it's time for the show The Tatiana Show Where you make friends and talk life and crypto I want to talk about Celsius Network. They're doing a really cool thing, trying to revolutionize the way we think about financial services. Basically, they're offering their users up to 10% annual interest on their crypto deposits. And there's no secret to how they're doing it. That 10% comes from them sharing 80% of their profits rather than the minuscule percentage the banks share. Celsius is giving our users $10 in BTC when they make a deposit of $200 or more in crypto or stable coins when they use promo code Tatiana. Go to Celsius.net. Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tatiana Show. It is the holiday season, but we are not stopping our work. We're carrying on, making more content for you guys. As you know, the Tatiana Show airs on Tuesdays, and you can find out more at thetatianashow.com. Today, I have a wonderful guest, but before I enjoy the company of my wonderful guest, I have to enjoy the company of my co-host, Josh Chagala, CEO and leader of Voltoro champions of successful raises on bank to the future congratulations josh to you and your team <laughs> thank you very much tatiana yet yeah, it's been it's been a wonderful ride uh back to the, you know i really looking back i think the it's been a long lost art and i wrote an article on this uh, on bitcoin magazine it's really a, a long lost art of raising capital through equity rather than strange token sales uh, in this in this space, <laughs> but we've done it. We've raised uh, through general equity, and I mean the, the campaign's still going for people that want to check it out. But um, it's been a really exciting ride, and I think people are really uh, sort of excited to remember. Oh yeah, you can actually buy equity, physical like actual equity in companies rather than some sort of promissory cryptographic token that doesn't represent much really. <laughs> are you crapping on tokens? <laughs> no, look. I, I, you know, everyone craps on tokens, everyone craps on ICOs. I think the concept of an ICO is actually still a beautiful thing. We, we enable all these people to be able to invest in, in cool projects and protocols. Protocols have traditionally never had the ability to raise money. So they are really good ideas. The problem is a lot of scammers come in and also VCs who, you know, a lot of people tout that, oh, this is the end of the VC. No, the VC just came in and sort of pre, pre, pre bought all the stuff and then sold it, dumped it on everyone when it went live. So they, they almost guaranteed a win out of these, these uh, uh, technologies. So, you know, it's sad that, uh, that it, it, it went the way it, it did with the SEOs, but I think, um, I don't know, once it matures, I think um, good companies like ourselves will be able to look at it a bit further once this market matures and comes out of this bear market. And maybe we, we, we have better regulations around this sort of stuff. Okay, is it too late for people to invest in Voltoro? Because now you guys did that round. Like, what if somebody's listening and they're like, "Oh man, I missed out." <laughs> no, well, you can definitely um, contact us uh, at uh, um, you know Joshua at Voltoro dot com uh, personally, or if you're in the US, you'd uh, an accredited investor, you'd have to go through like that. But if you uh, if you, I think the round on Banks of the Future is still going for like five more days or something like that, so or ten more days. I'm not sure. I have to check. But, um, well, by the time this airs, who knows if it'll be out yet. But okay, that yeah. sounds cool. Yeah, cool. So check it um, out. That's bnk to the future.com. So bank without an A, bnk to the future.com. And you'll see us there, Voltoro. Excellent. So today we have um, a friend of mine that I've known in the crypto space for a long time. I have to credit him for putting me on the radar of the amazing Baltic Honey Badger conference. He is from Latvia, I believe. And uh, it was amazing there. If people have a chance to go to the Baltic Honey Badger in Riga, uh, it is unreal, fantastic, amazing community there. It was really well attended as an event and had a lot of really good talks. Alex Petrov is the CIO of Bitfury. Uh, you guys have all heard of Bitfury. We're going to learn a little bit more for those of you that don't know about it. But thanks so much for joining us on the show today, Alex. Hi, Tanya. Thank you also for enjoying. Yes, absolutely. So um, before we get into some of the things that we are talking about in Riga that I think would be helpful for our audience, let's back it up a little bit. And can you give me a little bit of your background professionally and then a little bit more about what Bitfury does? Because Bitfury is sort of this big behemoth. There's a lot of things that you guys are involved with. So I'd love to get a breakdown of your experience in the crypto space, what made you interested in it, and what has that evolved into? 
Okay, so uh, I'm in IT approximately over 30 years. The IT is one of my specializations, what I'm like spend a lot of time in 1995, I was already know over 30 programming languages working like a programmer. I also study a lot of networking, Linuxes, different operating systems. Then I was working like a security auditor for a long time. Uh, spent also a uh, little bit over seven years performing uh, audits in financial institutions and also working in some uh, big banks. So, and finally, I like just by occasion, I find also the crypto and Bitcoin and uh, because it's Bitcoin practically combine everything together. So it's about programming, but it's about network. It's about uh, mathematics. It's about encryption. It's about economy. So I like it. So and I'm still enjoying this journey. So trying to study Bitcoin and better understand it more and more. And talking about the Bitfury, uh, Bitfury right now is a group of a company. So it's huge holding. And uh, right now it's including absolute different directions like bit for engineering, bit for reconstruction, bit for software. We are also creating a lot of products, uh, software products internally. They are spinning them out and creating separate company. One of the companies what we like create and you know it's like a crystal or blockchain. It's blockchain analysis. Uh, we also have lightning pitch. It's product who is providing services exactly for lightning payments for big merchants, for big companies. And they also trying right now to provide services for wallet owners, making the wallet uh, operations using lightning much simpler for, for people to understand because lightning is still is very geeky. Not a lot of people know how to establish channels, input all the like in hex channel IDs, set up all the servers and everything. So Lightning Pitch right now providing products and mostly we're providing it like white label for different merchants, providing them wallet solution, what is very, very simplified for, for users who doesn't understand how is Lightning to work. It also has AI and network <laughs> department uh, we still performing mining operations we are still creating the mining hardware and b3 also has b3 surround it's uh, intellectual property rights uh, on blockchain uh, for music industry i would like to be short because i can tell a lot of things what happens inside b3 because b3 right now it's really big Man, I remember, you know, I, I first found the Bitcoin white paper like really late 2010. And I, I think Big Fury was one of the first sort of companies in space, apart from Alpaca Socks at the stage, um, to even uh, even step into this as an industry. It was so early on. Uh, I, 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 maybe it was 2012 I first heard about Big Fury, but, but it was very early on. And they, they, they then I, were one of the first to really develop hardware and ASICs in the space uh, i think along with like butterfly labs was around at that time and and they ended up running or scamming people but bit fury has been a solid company always producing um uh, uh asics and and mining farms in general and then you guys have really branched out with a, a lot of the money that i, I guess you guys made from uh, mining bitcoin early is that is that how it happened did you guys uh, huddle onto those Bitcoin, and now you've got a, a nice big fund to be able to invest in other sectors of this industry. So there is one of the points where you say like we are hard, a hard link uh, Bitcoins. So running the mining operations, most of the miners, they, they need to sell approximately 60, 80% of all mining Bitcoins because you yeah. should cover the operational expenses you have employees you have data centers you spend your electricity there is a lot a lot of additional expenses you know, you, you should spend bitcoins the main goal of the miners is like processing transactions and providing security uh, for a blockchain uh, like making the blocks irreversible 
but uh, from the blockchain side, you have stimulation in reward, but you should still sell a lot of Bitcoins. And this mm. is returning on created Bitcoins or most of the created Bitcoins back to market for people who would like to use them because it's like initial phase of emission. You also asked me about when the Bitfury was started. Uh, the Bitfury was like practically started in 2011, maybe in 2010. I cannot uh, like name the companies what existing because b before uh, 2011, because it was mostly like a hobby for, for all of us. So Valerie uh, Vavilev, Valerie Nebesny, who is the founders of Bitfury, in 2011 and 2012, they also owned different businesses. And it was mining and Bitcoin operation was mostly hobby. Initially, we was using GPU cards. You mentioned also Bitfree Lab. The Bitfree Lab was not creating the ASIC. They practically using FPGA. Oh, yeah, right. That's, yeah. that's what it was. Because it was yeah, very yeah. early. I remember like ASICs came out. Uh, a little bit later on, and uh, those FPGAs, yeah, that was really the step up from from graphics cards. Yeah, and exactly before ASICs, B3 also made a lot of research and they built quite like big mining farm using FPGA. Exactly because the uh, people inside B3 know a lot of knowledge about how the electronics working, how the FPGA is working, how to optimize the mathematics. In result, they was using the same FPGA, but they increase a little bit efficiency compared to all existing solution. And they was initially like a little bit more profitable. Yeah. Then they start like creating the ASICs. And this is absolutely amazing additional story. It's it's a, it's li really like a tell story because uh, the first ASIC was created without any previous experience how to design IC chips. The one of the like co-founders of Bitfury, uh, the Valerian Besney, he's created the first chip just studying the books and understanding how everything is happens. So and he practically created the like first chip by himself alone in seven months. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. I, yeah, you know, this is what I love about this space. And this is what has drawn me to this space. This space brings technically brilliant minds in that have also got a little bit of rebellion. They've also got a little bit of, um, uh, you know, this sort of uh, freedom vibe about them as well. And, and it's this mixture of all sorts of different types of people that, that just makes this space super fascinating to me. Yeah, it's like any innovation. So right now, innovation, they all these require a lot of like minds uh, just to uh, fulfill the skeleton of the solution. Because like the even Bitcoin, like the paper, it's like just the skeleton of idea. You still need to create the software. You still need to create a lot of products. You still... Uh, required to solve a lot of the problems during this way and you should improve it constantly adjusting for existing market in existing cases and this is what it typically happens right now so we, we cannot just stock on the paper because uh, the initial idea uh, it just descri describing the basics but then they start using technology, they, they realizing a lot of like small aspects, they need to perform a lot of adjustments, they need to solve a lot of like uh, performance issues, scalability issues, social problems. And this is our playground. And yeah, it's always attracting the most brilliant minds because they, they, they see possibility how they can realize themselves. And this is what I like also in Bitcoin. So right now I can use all my knowledge and I really, really enjoy. What are some of the things that you've noticed evolving in the space that sort of surprised you, right? We all started out with stars in our eyes and a revolution. And now things, you know, have to sort of adjust to the existing world around us. And so there've been some compromises um, and some, you know, technological challenges. 
what are your thoughts on that? You know, what have you seen changing? And do you think that's sort of a natural thing? Do you think this is something that people should be concerned about? Um, or maybe you don't think that there's a moralization around that. I think it's more complex because all the innovations, they are driving and changing all the things what they are using uh, right now and what they used before. So there is even like the economical term, it's called key waves. It's uh, named uh, from the uh, Russian scientist economic, economists, uh, the Kontrasik. He described the exactly the case, then all like economy grow up, they are described by some innovations like railways, like the electricity, like the steam machines. And right now, I think Bitcoin is exactly representing the absolutely next step. So uh, our financial technologies, our financial system, uh, our tools, what we was using before, some of them are not built properly. Some of them are not working very efficient. And I think Bitcoin can help us uh, just to uh, perform the evolution from the old existing tools to new, more efficient tools. Uh, there is still a lot of illusions uh, about the like new technologies and that, that's topical because when people are facing something new, they became afraid. They are scary because they doesn't understand. They are trying to uh, find the analogies one-to-one -one from their previous experience looking on something new. But in most of the cases, there is no analogies. There is like a conversion from two-dimensional work to three-dimensional work. And yeah. I can, yeah, I can provide you a lot of examples, even in Bitcoin. So the people are saying the Bitcoin is not uh, able like to be competitive for Visa or for MasterCard because it's not able to perform like two, uh, 2,400 transactions per second like Visa. But the key point, Visa and Master, first of all, they are not the money. They are not the economical system. They are, mm. just, a, they are just a transport. The second point, then they are talking about the service systems, like the banking, like a SEPA payment, like the SWIFT payments, like Visa and Master. They are functioning only in like one dimensional world. So we have one source, one destination, one transaction per second. And in result, you like measuring how many transactions per second you are able to perform. And this is like the, uh, the measure, uh, how, how you're measuring that uh, network. But Bitcoin is multidimensional. Uh, what, what it's meaning. So you can take from 5,000 different accounts money. You can send it and pay like 2,000 salaries, 5,000 invoices, just by one single transaction. It's still one transaction, but you did like five, seven times more what the visa performing, like using one single transaction, because there is multiple inputs and multiple outputs, and it's absolutely not comparable. Yes, uh, Bitcoin right now are able to perform like three, seven, and even a little bit more transaction per second. But the key points, it even doesn't need to perform a lot of transactions. And if you would like to compare like Master and Visa, then better you should take the Lightning. And Lightning is absolutely different solution. It's absolutely work, it's functioning at, at, at absolutely different speed. If in Visa, in MasterCard, they are talking about like, two, three, five seconds, and they promising like to make it like smaller time. Lightning is about milliseconds. It 10, it's 1000 times faster. It's not comparable, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I just wanted to step back to what you said there about yeah. uh, people trusting blockchain and, and when new technologies. And I think this is a real big issue for Bitcoin because you're not only having to trust new technology, but trusting something to do with money is extremely hard. And then when you get things like 
you know, stories about drugs and dark markets, but then also scams like OneCoin and, and all these other, other things that come along. You really have to, uh, as a consumer, think, I really find this interesting to get past all of that and start to trust it as a money, as a currency, as a unit of exchange. And so, uh, you know, and then on top of what you're saying there with the, uh, with the speed of, of Visa and, and people saying, look, it can never scale, you're absolutely spot on. We are now hitting the time and the moment where we can actually match those, uh, those transactions a second because of Lightning. Uh, we, we've, uh, we have Altura, we've been uh, big advocates of the Lightning Network for a long time. Um, and uh, we, we, in fact, we were the first exchange to implement Lightning Network um, payments two years ago. And it was really interesting to see how fast it could work. And of course, it was very, very early. So there was a lot of little, little mistakes and things that would happen. But it was a really fascinating thing. And, and we've sponsored the conferences as well. Uh, the lightning conference and the hackathons and seeing people get together like the good old days without all these sort of scam projects that would come into these conferences that are a lot of them that I go to these, these hackathons be fantastic because it's really just is, you know, the, the, the engineers that are really geeky sitting down and developing cool tech and uh, showcasing the practicalities and the speed and the security of lightning payments as it's evolving now that we have SegWit in place and we've gotten past all of that nonsense, um, we, we really are seeing the pace of change moving a lot quicker. And God, I'm just looking so forward to seeing what um, what comes out of the community. And, uh, and you know, this is why I really also am thankful to companies like Bitfury who do put uh, money uh, and resources behind some projects uh, with their VC fund um, how is that all going uh, with, with you guys? Are you funding projects in that space? Um, I, I know that you do have funded projects in the general Bitcoin space, but I'm not sure if you guys are working with some of the, the Lightning stuff or off, off, channel, uh, off um, chain transactional technologies. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so first of all, Bitfury was spend a lot of resources else uh, uh, like in lightning and also to make the lightning possible then it was only in early early stage in 2016. We all the time communicating with Elizabeth Stark uh, the lightning uh, laboratory so lightning network and uh, during 2016 uh, we asked especially our analysts to perform research over market uh, find who is like more close to uh, perform first implementation of Lightning Network. They also say to Elizabeth Stark, Joseph Wu is quite close to like from the first version. And we have especially five persons, five developers who never worked for a bit for a before. We introduced them for Elizabeth Stark. Uh, we invite also Elizabeth Stark to came in Kyiv in Ukraine and they help to accelerate all the initial development for Lightning Network for first implementation. So right now, uh, the Lightning product, Lightning pitch inside B3 is changed quite seriously. A couple of like team leaders was changed, a couple of developers was changed, but we are still developing the Lightning. Uh, B3 was also represented in 2016, 2017, the first implementation of uh, lightning flower routing and it was tested uh, by French ICQ laboratory on the throughput and on routing. So B3 is still developing and spending a lot of resources performing different researches and helping to like deliver the new technologies in place. I also personally spend a lot of time to make the segment possible to activate it to explain for people how it's working why it's better instead of just increasing the block size and so on and you was also ask me about the investment bitfree has this uh, like separate uh, department or separate sub company uh, it's called uh, bitfree capital it's practically the fund and we investing in absolutely different startups some of them are very well known for you, some of them less known for you. For example, 
uh, before he was investing in Bitgo, in Bitpesa. All that information is absolutely public available. The also all the time researching and reviewing different startups, different ideas, if they are able to help them, if they are thinking they will be useful. So be trying to invest and support all like potential startups who can deliver very useful ideas and a solution for a real market. So yeah, I have a question I, about that. How do you know that somebody is going to deliver? I mean, what are some of the criteria that you use in order to judge somebody that they're worth investing in? So that, that's a really good question. So I spend a lot of time reviewing and analyzing different startups during all my career. So I was participating for a lot of different companies then they just create, starting to create new products and they just functioning in startup mode. And from my point of view, the real value, real potential, uh, so it's not the just idea. The idea without the team who are able to realize the idea, who are able to create the, at least the alpha version about uh, to create just the pilot product is still zero cost. The idea can be great. But if it doesn't have a team who are able to build this product, who has very good motivation, and it's mostly should be the motivation plus the expertise and all necessary abilities to make the implementation, then it's the first step. The next step, after showing the pilot, you should be able to create the like complete product and you need to hire the additional people you need to find the additional uh, personnel who will take care about the management about the sales uh, about the marketing but even when you create the product it's still not the like complete task you should be able to sell the product and this is a marketing strategy how you're selling, how you're delivering, how you're packaging, how you're looking after the market. Do you pay attention for feedback from the customers, what the customers are really need and what the, uh, the real customers really would like to see like a solution. And only combining like three, all, all three uh, steps together, you, you, you can create the product. Uh, this is my personal like opinion. It's maybe like, it's may differ from what, what like normally people are looking and uh, thinking about the startups, but combining all together, you can create everything. The, the, most of the limits is in our brains. The people can create absolutely amazing things. And only small percentage of the people can realize looking on the market, what the people really need like the next product because all the inventions they are not like asking the society how they would like to get the product it's creating something new it's a little bit about the innovations about the crazy ideas this episode of the Tatiana Show has been brought to you by eToro.com. You can trade in a wide range of assets, connect with the crypto community, and automatically copy top performing portfolios at eToro.com. Quite simply, they have the top currencies, smart tools, low fees, social trading, all in one simple app. Connect with over 11 million eToro traders around the world using social feeds. eToro makes powerful trading tools easy. Get started in minutes right now at eToro.com. That's E T O R O.com. Calm. Wonderful. Uh, I, you know, one thing that I remember back in the day, I think it was, geez, I think it was like 2014 and Bitfury, because you guys were so early with the ASICs, sorry, we're jumping a little bit all over the place here with this interview. Yeah, first, that's but okay. the, it, it's such a, it's such a, a, a longstanding company that's got uh, fingers in a lot of pies. So it's very interesting to, to jump and taste test some of these pies. Um, <laughs> um, so in 2014, I remember there was uh, there was a, a time there where Bitfury, because you guys had invented uh, some of the earliest ASICs, you guys did control at a certain time. I think it was Bitfury, if my memory calls me correct, um, that that actually had more than 51% of the 
hash power for like a little tiny section of BTC's history. And uh, I remember the whole community going, ah, you know, and, and to the credit of BitFuries, they actually stopped people joining the pool and pulled back their, uh, their, their hash power to drop below 51% and, uh, and get to around about 40, 42 or something like that. And then it dropped even further over time. And, and that was a really interesting experiment in this whole fear of the 51% attack, because uh, at the time, you know, that, that was still the thing that was on everybody's minds, like 51% attack, that's how you kill Bitcoin. But as we saw, Bitcoin didn't die. Um, there was incentive enough for a company, a private company, to pull back hash power to be a good actor um, in the space. And so that was that was very fascinating. To, um, yeah, I don't know what you have to say about that. Yeah, I, I remember the time, so it was uh, exactly 2014. And uh, yes, the at some moment, the Libit overcame over 51% of the hashing power and uh, they realized that point a little bit before they reach like 51 percent and because it was external pool uh if it doesn't remember so it was g hash right now that's right yeah, yeah right now yeah. yeah right now this pool is not existing anymore but the g hash was just accumulating all the hashing power even from the machines what they are selling for our customers mm -hmm. and the uh, like just made a decision, uh, just to avoid like risk of 51% on one pool in one hands. They start to separate it from multiple pools. We establish our own pool. They also ask some of the customers to change the pool for a different one. They also uh, start uh, preparing for a plan and they start providing the hashing power for external external customers just to avoid exactly like handling the 50 or close to 50 percent of hashing power of one hands and right now they are still trying to be like a little bit before uh, below this line just to provide like more comfort for all the industry to decrease all risks as, as much as possible they create different long-term strategies and they are trying to follow them yeah it, it's it's really fascinating um to see uh, those 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 game theoretical uh, rule sets being played out in real time. And I remember thinking, how, how fantastic is this of a, to have an economy where we don't only see it play out, but we see it play out without force, without violence. It's like the free market truly working together to make sure that a network stays uh, functional. And that was, that was beautiful. Yeah, that, that, that's really interesting. And once again, so uh, I would like to say we get absolutely new tool. And that tool is combining not just the mathematics, not just the technology. It has three different layers. It's social, it's the technical, and it's also economical. And they are trying to resolve absolutely different cases on all, all, all of each level, uh, on all uh, all of uh, these levels during the our evolution for example forking even creating like bitcoin cash hmm. so it's also our like playground how they are solving different problems and even like uh like creating and splitting for forks creating the uh, bitcoin cash so that that's this very very healthy environment for a bitcoin they solving social problems. They realizing what if some group of people uh, absolutely disagree how all the project are uh, planning to go forward. They are just creating their own project. This is removing the social crisis inside the group, and the rest group like social group can just go much much faster. Otherwise, no. yeah. Otherwise, if you have like internal conflicts. Uh, uh, you, you cannot like develop the products. You you locked in multiple directions. There is a lot of conflicts. These create a lot of like complicated problems. So they they are trying to solve them one by one. Uh, each solution uh, 
providing us more knowledge, more experience, how we are planning to go uh, forward and solve the new problems, what we see on our horizon. Even about the hashing power, even about the long-term planning. You also mentioned the ICO. And by the way, you also said uh, what, what a lot of people are thinking, uh, what the Bitcoin is like fraudulent money, but uh, Bitcoin is like scum. Uh, and ICO is creating a lot of scum. But once again, this is just a tool. There is no existing uh, like categories like a bad tool or a good tool. It's like a rifle. So good or bad, uh, any tool making the human person. It's a social aspect. There is no even close term existing like the fraudulent money or like criminal money. The money is just a tool. Mm. How people are using that tool, how people are using money, these create this money like illegal or criminal. And that's normal, absolute normal proportion. There is a lot of USD dollars. I also use steel for a criminal activity. You can also check there is existing UCA treasury official report uh, about the risks, what different cryptocurrency and different financial tools, insurance companies, banks are represented right now. And if you check the table, the cryptocurrencies has lower risks downstairs. A lot of risks still existing in the banks. A lot of risks are still existing in like insurance companies, you, you heard multiple times about like banks are washing money, the insurance coming. It's just the proof what the like old tools, they are not working properly. Yeah. In, in cryptocurrencies, you can solve a lot of problem. And if you are talking about the ICO, the ICO is a beautiful tool, how you solve the existing problem, what was mm. not solvable in the easy way before. If you want to raise money in very fast way for a new product, you can use the ICO. But ICO doesn't solve the social problem. From 10,000 startups, only less than 1,000 is surviving. And from that 1,000, less than two or 300, depending from what kind of it, like sector we are talking about, uh, became profitable. And Absolutely same about the investors. If the investors investing in the, like some kind of a product and they doesn't know where the money going for how they investing, they will going to lose the money. And the ICO is just a meeting of the people who never built any startups before. And from the other side, there is a lot of people who never invest before. And yeah. only two, two groups are meeting. So sure, there is a lot of like failures. They are still absolutely natural, natural proportion. A lot of startups, they are not able to deliver any results. They are losing money. And a lot of investor who was investing without any previous experience, they are also losing money. ICO is a good tool, but uh, the ICO can be seriously adjusted if you uh, like add the additional layer. There should be some institution in the middle the institution, yeah i mean like, I, like I, initial investors please go on. yeah I, I i absolutely agree and i, I think really where the, the the middle position can also be smart contract i mean it can be a way that the smart contract releases coins through uh, over time as as progress is shown things like this this is what this is typically look for and it just doesn't exist all of a sudden you have these kids being dumped with you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars worth of crypto. And then they go, well, you know, screw it. We don't need to work another day. I'm just going to go hang out at the beach and party <laughs> instead of, you know, slowly giving the money across. This is just one of the problems, but also on the consumer side, we have had years and years and years of government's obsession with de-risking people from risk. And uh, this has yeah. caused the fact that people just don't understand risk anymore. They fall into such scam, such blatant scams. 
uh, that they, they really don't even understand what risk even looks like. And I think sometimes, I, I mean, I, I don't know, I, I feel that sometimes people need to burn their hands to go, oh, that flame is hot. I'd better actually, you know, be a bit more careful when, when I'm going to invest in some of these things. So I think it just takes time for the whole world to mature now that we have the freedom to invest in things um, without, uh, you know, regulatory oversight. Of course, regulatory oversight will happen anyway, but I think people need to learn of what, what risk looks like again. Yeah, uh, you, you're right. And you even mentioned during your speech the key point. Uh, you, you said what the like investment uh, should go uh, by portions, step by step. And this is absolutely true. So if we will be made uh, able to modify the ICO to provide investment, like all, all the uh, raised funds step by step, then you're performing like uh, some bunches or some amounts of work. And then you get the next round for next uh, step. It will be more healthy. Because in this way, if you fail on the first step, so all the money will go back to investors because you fail, you already fail. And there is no needs just to provide all the bunch of money immediately for a startup who doesn't know how to like control all the financial resources. If they start to spending money for uh, like uh, very expensive offices or very expensive cars, the, the investors is always thinking from the position how much of the return they will get from each invested dollar. And most of the startups are failing in that point because they're thinking what they got the money just to develop something, but they never should like return the money back with profit. They're just spending. Uh, I'm a little bit disagree, and I'm thinking uh, the whole problem of the ICO cannot be solved just by a smart contract. You, you still need to review the abilities of the team. You still uh, need to review uh, is there real people existing behind the white paper. Uh, but from some point, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, from some points, I, I think. Uh, even like dividing the investment for small portions will help, will work, and will provide like uh, additional insurance. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I think that comes down to what I was talking about in terms of the, the, the general public not understanding risk and not understanding true due diligence on how to, how to appropriately determine risk. Uh, and that that and there's also some technical issues here. Like, how do you actually look through a GitHub? How do you actually look through the GitHub of these projects and see that there's there's a lot of development or actual work instead of just marketing and hype? So these are things that will come through maturity uh, of the of the space. Plus, all, a lot of young people that are coming out of you know leaving schools in this uh, uh, now they 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 already know a little bit about GitHub. They understand how to use it. They understand a little bit of coding, um, a bit more than just uh, you know changing "Hello World." Um, so it's uh, it, it's. I think we're getting to a point where the next generation will be a lot more clued in. That's my hope, anyway. What do you think? Uh, so uh, the the young people uh, they have the possibilities even to create the products, but they need some guidance and some combinations. And this is why I'm also like the venture investors, because they are not just giving you money. They are also providing you a lot of the help. They are also giving their hand and they are also mentoring you. They are also providing very useful advices. And this, uh, increases increasing the chance for all the startups to become more successful. Uh, during like your speech, you also mentioned the regulations, but the there there's some issue with regulations uh, uh, existing all the time. Business trying to find the new ways, the the business creating absolutely new products, and regulations are always following. And mostly 
the regulations is a little bit too late. And regulations are also because they are not involved in the case quite deeply. They doesn't know how the market is working in small details. They are not able to cover and protect like non-professional investors, non-professional people from, from mistakes. I think in the regulations will anyway are going to miss a lot of the cases because they are trying to protect the people who doesn't have the necessary knowledge. And people who are creating quite very complicated solution who are creating very complicated scam even, they absolutely perfectly know all the aspects of all tools, all like economical systems, financial systems, and they always finding the small holes what they are really abusing. Now I have, um, I do, uh, we, we do have to wrap it up slowly, but there was, you know, a question that um, a friend of mine asked. He said, uh, he said, oh, Bit Fury, you know, the thing is, I, I, I don't trust them anymore since they're collaborating with law enforcement to de-anonymize Bitcoin transactions and erode yeah. privacy. Well, how do you, how do you answer? How do you, you know, what do you say to that? So uh, th there is one misconcept uh, or misunderstanding uh, what the people are like quite common mention about the like crystal blockchain. The crystal blockchain initially was created just a statistical, like, like a statistical engine, engine. So it's practically like a blockchain explorer. It doesn't collect any personal information. It doesn't spying over you. Uh, we just able to take transactions, uh, look on the transactions, visualize them, uh, also taking the old public sources like Bitcoin talks, the published Bitcoin addresses on the some fraudulent sites, what our crowdlers is collecting, like the information from the public sources. They are just able to build like the view what the approximately uh, percentage of the money came from which sources. Uh, the crystal blockchain was created like a separate product because a lot of people from the industry, from the exchanges, they came to Bitfree and they asked us for help just to uh, collect more information or visualize the information how Bitcoins are moving various bitcoins is gone and they trying to identify some of the exchanges they trying to identify some of the mixtures and because they also perform a lot of researches how the bitcoin is working there is like weak uh, places there is a lot of like mistakes what the bitcoin mixtures non-professionally created and they are still has small trails it's mathematical, mathematical mistakes. So the, the showing there is a problem in the Bitcoin and the helping to solve like normal cases. Plus then you're talking about like uh, about the uh, private people and the businesses. Yeah. The businesses always asking for different tools because why Bitcoin is better uh, if you're comparing Bitcoin for Zcash or for Green or for Monero, because Bitcoin able to deliver both solutions. You can get the full transparency from one point, and you can also get full anonymity from the another one point. This is why Bitcoin is called pseudo anonymous system. If it doesn't publish what your wallet belonging to you, it's very hard, very hard to identify you. And if you're spending quite small volumes, if you're paying quite for coffee, if you're spending the small amount of the like values for small stuff, like in real life, then you're spending the cash. No one will ask you for small amounts and no one will take care about the small amounts. But for big companies, there is always, always was required to show how your funds are making turnover inside the big companies. Your investors would like to see how you're moving the funds, how you're spending the funds, 
you should also provide the accountancy and show how you like using all your resources. And for companies, the transparency of Bitcoin is a great plus because you doesn't need any accounting. Uh, you practically can perform and automatize all the accounting using the Bitcoin blockchain. And if you're talking about the green, about the Zcash, uh, first of all, they are offering only half of the solution because it's not transparent for small persons, for small like individuals. Uh, you can perform all the payment, but for like institutions, for small businesses, it will be very, very hard to prove uh, where they get their resources, how they get their resources. The banking right now have a lot of the issues because the IML is not working properly. And the one of the reasons why IML is not working properly because anti-money laundering is very flexible definition. People are trying to look on your operations and they're making decisions. And there is no very like concrete uh, criteria why one transaction is fraudulent and another one is absolutely legitimate. In result, they are slowing down all the operation for businesses. But if you will be able to provide semi-automatic tool, uh, which will lay an absolutely transparent treat areas. And that tool can provide you absolutely transparent, like result, like soaring from zero to 100. Uh, this transaction get the funds like 60% from different payment system, 2% uh, from exchanges, 5% uh, from gambling, and there is like 7% of suspicion, suspicious money uh, involved in some fraudulent operation. Then it's absolutely normal criteria. Or if you're getting like rating, like uh, absolutely 80% was gone from the exchange and marked like stolen. Then you can ask the customer how he uh, get these funds. And that allow us to get the absolutely new automatically how we can evaluate all the inputs. And uh, providing the crystal like a separate product, we practically provide the tool what the market was asking us for. There is a lot of companies who are providing the similar services on the market right now, like chain analysis and multiple, multiple, multiple others. The reason why uh, these products are existing, because financial institution would like to get the comfort and they are asking for uh, such tools. The, if you'd like to build the bridge between current Bitcoin uh, and currently existing financial institution, you should provide some kind of it, uh, some kind of the tools, what will provide you to analyze the transactions and get some conclusion. Yeah, otherwise I, it will not work. Yeah, I, 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 I tend to agree in a way just because, you know, I don't want some really horrible criminal dumping their money on, on Voltoro. I'd like to know, oh, okay, this hasn't come from you know, some, some epically terrible uh, event. Um, but at the same time, I do understand the fact that people are worried that de-anonymizing it actually makes it scary, like, uh, to, or it makes it less useful as money because you suddenly receive some money and you have to then check as a user, hey, was this in a crime three transactions ago? Or, <laughs> and I do, so I do understand those sorts of worries that that will add friction to, and so people will just say, look, it's all too hard. I just won't accept Bitcoin. A couple of times uh, I made like my own research just to prove what the funds, what I want, uh, was trying to spend is absolutely legitimate. And it was a little bit silly, but like a couple of big exchanges, uh, like five years ago, uh, four years ago was asking me uh, and they reject uh, my deposit uh, freeze even like my bitcoins uh, saying what the bitcoin is like not legitimate and i should explain how i was get them so i made just a visualization explain them 
and in result, I was able to defreeze them. But uh, I'm really afraid how many people can lose their funds only because they're not able to prove what they get real, uh, like uh, re real, like clean sources of the money. Yeah, yeah, and then the, the, there might be a, a premium on newly minted coins because they are totally clean. <laughs> this is yeah. a weird world we live in. Look, I've always enjoyed, I've always found uh, the, the founder of BitFury very interesting as a chat, Valerie Vavilov, um, and uh, and I've loved following the evolution of BitFury, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what the future holds. So always my pleasure. You can ask, and in the like in limits of my understanding, I will provide you like my versions, how I see the future. You're also asking me about the like crystal blockchain, but the crystal right now is absolutely separate company. So it's like uh, they, they creating the software product inside the BitFury, they spinning them out. And right now uh, the crystal blockchain is absolutely separate company. Uh, they have separate CEO, it's uh, Marina Haustova. Uh, maybe you know because she was also involved in the industry in crypto industry before. And she's right now leading a product absolutely separately from Bitfury. So she uh, uh, she, she uh, absolutely 100% uh, 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 more accurately can answer it on your question because I'm not following and not controlling what happens in the crystal block blockchain right now. She better know the product, she better know all the possibilities and all the functions. But from my point of view, the, the products like the crystal data, like the chain analysis uh, can provide us a lot of feedback and statistical feedback and economical feedback. And we still need a lot of information just to better understand how the tools is working. Some like crime cases, some the uh cases that then bitcoins is stolen i think uh we, we should also track resources and better understand what happens i'm still uh not clearly understand what happens on uh, empty box their funds was gone what happening on some exchanges they claiming what the money is stolen but i would like to better know what what happens in reality Oh yeah, if you could, uh, I, I lost a lost a nice chunk on Mt. Gox. So if you ever find out, if you get that crystal ball and point it at uh, at Mt. Gox, that would be much appreciated. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, the the uh, the crystal data right now is trying to perform like uh, they they are taking a look on the some cases like the ransomware cases, then the Bitcoins was asked, or uh, then the, some Bitcoins is stolen and they perform the searches. But once again, so Bitfree is quite a big company right now. We have over 300 software developers. We have a lot of different products. I'm not able to follow over each of a product quite deeply. So I'm more trying to spend my time performing the analysis, to think about the strategic future uh, and solve the existing problems, what we have inside the current products. I have to ask you about how do you manage all of your time? So we still have a few more minutes. We are going a little bit over. I'm sure our listeners are happy because this is a pretty dense episode with a lot of info. But the thing that really motivated me to have you on was your mastery of your schedule. You're obviously doing 50 million things and you have a bit of a system. I'm curious if you could maybe share some of your resources that you learned this system from and some tips and tricks uh, for people that want to have longevity in this space that maybe don't want to burn out, but still want to be productive and competitive because we all know that uh, crypto never sleeps. Uh, the crypto in reality really never sleeps. And like any startups, uh, then you like starting the new company, you should work hard you should work a lot and people are thinking after like one or two years they will be more relaxed but in reality so like in bit free it's not <laughs> oh, you, you're just working even more harder and it's all about your like internal evolution because you should better think how you're organizing your own time 
you should better plan your schedule. You should better like divide time between different uh, subjects, between different people. You should also improve your communications. And people normally like performing the very great evolution when they start into new startups. They increasing, uh, they they trying to train themselves. They trying to improve their abilities. And this is what I'm doing over time. I'm trying to improve my time management. I'm, I'm trying to improve my task management. I'm trying to improve my communications. Uh, I even performing like yoga before, and this allow me to better organize my mind. Uh, it's allow me to better control me, uh, my body. And in result, I'm able to handle like a little bit higher load, but I also need rest. So uh, I'm working hard, but I'm, uh, I'm also trying to rest sometimes. And it's all about like keeping in and yang, then you are like performing very at very high uh, load, at very high performance, some tasks, and then you need short break just to relax or even during the conversation, when people asking you, um, you already know what they are going to ask. You practically already know what they like asking you, but you can relax a little bit. You can enjoy the speech. You can take a look around, enjoy the nice weather. And in result, this is exactly the combination when you're acting at very high speed and then you are trying to relax a little bit. I'm sleeping normally sometimes four, six hours per night uh, because of uh, the big company and we have multiple time zones. Sometimes uh, the business activity can wake me up during the night, but that's absolutely normal shadow for me. I'm trying to get the fun. I'm trying to solve uh, the absolutely new uh, tasks. I'm absolutely open for a new competition. I'm trying to uh, get the fun from everything what I'm doing. And I'm also using all, all my knowledge and all my experience to make it better, to improve it, to study new things. That, that, that's just a travel. So you should just uh, try to find the better balance between the business and between life. Yeah, I think that can be a little bit challenging for people. Um, and I also liked that pocket app that you told me about. I've been using that because I'm always coming across articles and then I don't want to bookmark it. I don't know why. But anyway, yeah, guys, check out the pocket app too. Um, this has been a wonderful interview. Thank you so much for making the time, Alex. Uh, where can people see you speaking? How can they connect with you? What if somebody wants something from BitFury? What are the processes in order to make that happen? So uh, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, you can also ask me some questions on Twitter. Um, you can also find me on Telegram. You can also send me an email. You can also find me on the Facebook. I'm not quite often checking the Facebook, normally like once per two, three, four days. But uh, talking about the conferences right now, I'm not quite often traveling for, for some conferences because of the business reasons. Uh, I need to uh, more focus on the like daily tasks, what I'm performing. There is also a lot of activities, what I'm trying to better like separate between different people, delegate some responsibilities. But I'm still getting a lot of fun uh, participating for different conferences and uh, performing like spending time for uh, with, with different peoples uh, uh, I, i'm getting very valuable feedback what people are thinking about the different technologies what they are afraid what they are thinking about the different products so just try to find me on the twitter if you have something you, you can write me your question and i will try you to provide some answers that's it thank you Tanya. wonderful will you be coming to a latin american bitcoin conference or no uh, sorry, once again. Are you going to come to Uruguay for the Latin American Bitcoin Conference? 
Uh, I will try. Right now, I'm not. I hope sure. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure about my shit. Also, I'm trying. If I'm st staying like closer to conference location, I'm trying to be there. But right now, I'm right now I'm in Europe. Uh, but after a couple of uh, days, uh, I shall be in another one side of the globe. So this is topic on my schedule. So I'm flying whatever was my attention is required. Well, fingers crossed. We hope to see you there. I enjoyed, um, you know, hanging out in Riga and hopefully we'll get a chance to do that again. Um, mm -hmm. Josh, any final words? No, uh, it was it was lovely to talk to you. Um, uh, Alex and uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing what what the future holds for BitFury. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you. It's Thank you, everybody. Awesome. Very cool. So, if people are liking this show, please share it with your friends. The Tatiana Show dot com airs on Tuesdays on our friend the LTB Network, their network of wonderful podcasters. So check them out too. And thank you to our sponsors, uh, eToro and Celsius. So check them out and the links. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Hey there, it's time for the show. The Tatiana Show. Where you make friends and talk life and crypto. We gotta think and reflect. And use lots of intellect With our hearts When we work Together I know that it can be So hard out there Looking all around and saying That life ain't fair So that is why We will fight and stay up late at night Listening to the Tatiana Show Thank you for listening to the Tatiana Show. Please follow us on Twitter at Queen Tatiana or on Facebook and Instagram at Tatiana Moreau's Music. More episodes can be found at thetatianashow.com and make sure you leave a review on iTunes and tell your friends. What's the point of all this technology without a little love in our lives? Our hosts, Tatiana Moroz, Dr. Stephanie Murphy, and Lauren Kasovitz have come together to bring you Proof of Love. Go to proofoflovecast.com. The Tatiana Show has been brought to you by CryptoMediaHub.com, a boutique marketing and PR agency for Bitcoin and beyond.